What's going on guys? So today we're going to be working on my Tokimuri AKM. We're going to be doing a couple of things today, uh, but I want the primary focus of this video to be really around installation and disassembly of the SAG front end here on the AKM, as well as replacement of the stock. Going to be replacing it with this Airsoft Artisan stock right here. But That'll come later, so we'll go ahead, get this out of the way, and uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to be kind of working backwards here. Um, I've already installed the rail. I'm going to modify it a little bit, so that's why this needs to come off. And then because the sag is free float and has the optics mount behind the irons, um, that's basically causing an issue where I can't get the bolt out of the gun. So if we take off the recoil spring, we pull the bolt back. I can't get this out because it's it's actually hitting on the top here and it just won't come out. So just keep that in mind if you do pick up this rail kit. So I need to take the front end off in order to lift the trigger box out in order to take the stock off. So might as well get everything done um, all at the same time. So first thing I'm gonna do is just disassemble the upper here and we'll take off the screw. Keep in mind, you may wanna Loctite some of this stuff down um, once you've really got it dialed in. The AKM does recoil a fair bit, so some of this stuff can get loose over time. So I'm just gonna unscrew all of these things here. And then this one might be free spinning, so I might need another Allen on the other side just to hold it in place. I'm just gonna take these pieces off here. There we go. And if my memory serves me correctly, um, you're gonna receive the rail in an assembled state. And so that's kind of why you're gonna want some tools. So actually we're gonna, we're gonna need a second Allen set. These are SAE, but it'll work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And that's just gonna hold it in place while I crack this apart and then unscrew that. So now we're left with that piece, with that pin in there, and we're gonna need to drive that out. So it looks like we're gonna need a punch set. I'm using a 730 seconds punch to tap that out. Just keep in mind, this thing is in there pretty good. So it will require a bit of work here. Let me just get a mat under here. And it's gonna be more the same on trying to get that out of there, but there you go. So this piece is pretty tight in the rail when you receive it, and it's gonna be difficult to get this back in. So a little bit of lubrication will go a long way for that piece. Just keep things organized. I'm gonna keep them in a metal tray here. So put that in there. So from that, you should be able to pull this forward. Yeah, so it's gonna need some assist. There we go, it just pulls forward. Let me, there we go. Let's get this rubber band out of the way. And we'll be able to pull the lower section of the rail off. And that's what that looks like right in there. And that interfaces with that piece. All right, so from here, got a couple of screws. This is going to hold the upper piece down as well as this screw over here. We'll come in and we'll need to take each one of these off. So all three on this side need to come off and then all three on this side. All right, with that out of the way, we need to take off this piece, which is just holding to the gas tube. We'll undo that. Same on the other side. And so once that's off, your gas tube's pretty much free floating. And so now you're left with this rail. It's ready to come off. So you just lift up your front sight. And then you should be able to also pull up this little release latch for your gas block. And then just move this out like that. There you go. But for right now, we need to get that out of the way. All right, so that's gonna free me up now. So I can actually get rid of the bolt, take that out of the gun. 
There's our gas tube right here. So those are those screws that kind of run through. And so we're left with this piece right here. So we do need to take out the front trunnion in order to remove the inner barrel and we're gonna be replacing the bucking in there. Remove either screws on the trunnion here. There's a lot of screws that put this freaking rail together, man. And then that's gonna low, take off our lower piece here. And then is there should be some screws inside. I don't know if you guys, yeah, I can't get the angle, but there's some screws inside of here and we need to get those popped off. Oh, and by the way, there's these some, these washers here and that goes on the gas block right in here. So we'll talk about that on reassembly. So keep in mind these screws that secure the trunnion to the receiver, they're usually pretty tight. Um, so just keep that in mind. They usually put some red Loctite in there. If this is your first time taking off the front end, you might have to get through that. Luckily, I've already done this before, so it's been a little bit loosened up. But again, keep in mind, you may want to Loctite some of this stuff down in case recoil gets a little bit too much. At this point, we should be able to slide the front end out of the receiver. So this is what we're left with on the receiver. And so let's get to work on this piece right here. So this is the stock Trunnion um, piece. Ditac set comes with this outer barrel and this front sight post. And so, oh, just lost it. This is your dry fire mechanism right here. Something like that. <laughs> it allows you to dry fire. So we'll put that away. All right, so at this point, you should be able to access that little screw in there. And that looks like that is a two millimeter. We don't need to go all the way. We just need to back it off a bit. And then there's a couple of, there's, there's this piece right in here. That's where the punch will come in handy again. And we will need to drive that out. And I believe this is a piece that you would replace um, as part of the SAG kit. So that comes right out. And at this point, if I remember correctly now, okay, we pull out the inner barrel. And then there's this Phillips head and we would just unscrew this. Now this is not necessary for what I'm trying to do, which is just replace the inner barrel and the bucking, but for installation sake for the SAG kit, I wanna show you guys this. So you'd undo that. And then something that I struggled with for a really long time is the fact that the barrel stays stationary and the trunnion moves forward off this. So obviously to reinstall this, you would slide the trunnion back on the outer barrel Boom, like that. You may also wanna transfer over this plastic piece. I did on mine, but I, I don't know if it's entirely necessary. But yeah, you just slide it back onto there when you're reassembling like that. Slide in your pin like so, and you may need to align it. Yeah, that'll go like that. And then you can take your punch and just tap that on him. and just make sure it's flush with either side. For the gas block assembly, obviously, um, you would slide this on, fasten the two screws down here. Make sure it's aligned as well, and that way it's nice and straight. And then this is your outer barrel assembly, ready for installation on your AKM. I'm gonna go ahead into this inner barrel here, and we're gonna do some work. I haven't actually done this before, so come with me on this journey. Looks like we just unscrew the hop up here. We'll unscrew the hop up wheel here. And the reason I'm making this change as well is because I was having some trouble hopping heavier BBs. And so, oh, that just revealed another screw here. So there's three screws that we need to undo and that's gonna take apart your hop up 
assembly. So there we go. Revealing the stock bucking here. So I want to take a look. I want to understand how is it pushing down? So it looks to me like it's pushing down on either side. So that's metal pushing down directly onto the bucking on either side. So that's what that looks like for the Tokimori AKM. There is no nub in there. That's metal on metal. Interesting. And I was still having trouble hopping heavier BBs. Well, let's test it out and we'll find out later. Well, this is your inner barrel. Let me get a tape measure out real quick. And as you can see, this is 200 millimeter inner barrel or eight inches. And I'm gonna replace it with a 250 millimeter inner barrel from PDI. So we'll pull this out now just to show you the difference. So this is a 6.01 inner barrel and we'll be using a PDI W hold bucking. This is my preferred bucking for accuracy, 70 degrees to put that on there. And then let's go ahead and reassemble the hop up unit. Screw that into the lower recessed hidden one into the top of the hop up. That's together. I'll drop in the metal arm back on top and it looks like it's it's a pretty good design honestly. It looks like it's self aligning on the actual hop up and maybe we could take a look at what that would look like. Let's see if you guys could see that. So as it pushes down, it's staying top dead center and exposing that about that much of the hop. So we'll see if this fixes my issue. It still doesn't look like much is coming down, but we'll see if this helps solve the issue I was having with hopping heavier BBs with a different bucking. All right, well, we'll give it a try and uh, we'll find out. So I'm gonna go ahead, reattach this wheel, make sure we align the nub into the wheel. So on the back of the wheel, there's this groove and you wanna align that nub onto that wheel. And then we'll go ahead and screw that all back together. Just being careful not to cross thread anything. Let's get that nice and tight. And then we should be able to just spin this. And there it goes up and down. So I have that on the max setting. Take a look inside, looks good. Potentially adding in a piece of rubber between those pieces to give it a little bit more hop, but we'll find out and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so reassembly. So you're taking your old hop unit out of the receiver. You've set up your front end by taking off the trunnion, sliding it backwards from the, from the front to the back on the new barrel, added your gas block. So now we go ahead, put this key back in here Screw this back all together. There you go, get it nice and tight. Then we'll slide the inner barrel back in like so. And then we will tighten the grub screw at the bottom of the trunnion, locking in your entire assembly here. So this is your outer barrel assembly. And that's ready to go back into the receiver. All right, so what I'm going to do now is remove the trigger box from the receiver and that's going to allow me access to this rear rear piece here and i'm going to replace it with this emg rifle works aluminum stock plate and that's going to allow me to put this picatinny adapter on there which is going to allow me to run the collapsible stock so first things first we need to remove the selector. To do that, so to remove the selector, what we wanna do is put the weapon in fire and we want to get the hammer to go forward. There we go. So there's the disconnector and the hammer is gonna come forward. So just slide the disconnector forward to re-engage the hammer and then let it go forward. So at that point, with our selector set, we'll go ahead and click it into the safe position. And then from the safe position, 
what we want to do is push down the hammer or push down this uh, this um, this disconnector here as well and roll the selector up and then that's going to release it from the receiver from there what we are going to do is drive out these two pins so it's super easy if you have a stock AKM it's pretty easy to do the reason I had to take off the whole front end is just because of the the sag rail drive those out so there's our pins those two pins are out and then I believe the trigger box should just come right out now so there you go that's the trigger box here's some springs just be mindful of that side and we'll put this off to the side now so here's our low receiver in order to take off the rear piece now to get it replaced I will need to unscrew the grip this is a real steel plum um, grip from Arsenal and it just fits right on don't need to replace any hardware so that's what that looks like and then I need to go into that bolt right there it's where our three millimeter comes in handy again and just loosen so this is gonna be pretty tight um, from the factory I've already taken this apart once so it's loosened up for me but there we go and once we take that out this whole stock piece will come out what you're gonna to want to do is grab this pin here off of the stock Toki Murui piece and that just eliminates the uh, the top cover wobble and then replace it into your new adapter here beautiful all right so we just slide this back in here and it might it's a tight fit so we got to align this up right it's a little bit of a tight fit it might need some assistance from what I've seen so far and you just gonna have to give it a couple of taps and make sure it's seated all the way down in that receiver so that's in there firm and now we can go ahead run the screw back home on good and tight just like the Germans like and I'm gonna go ahead and put my grip back on there we go and this is always tricky because you got to find the threads I'm just gonna I'm worried I'm cross threading this though you know what actually no it feels good all right so there we go <laughs> does require a little bit of fishing so just keep that in mind but we're able to re-secure our plum grip and there you go so reassembly is the reverse I'm going to take my trigger group I'm going to drop it back into my lower and let's get the trigger in first and then we'll rack it ro roll it in there there we go I'm going to grab my pins and just insert them And then I'm going to use my hammer to tap them back into place. There we go. I'm going to grab my safety, insert it like so. Make sure it aligns with the hole on the other side of the trigger box. There we go. And then pull the trigger and the safety just drops right in place. There we go, click, 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 functioning good. One thing I wanna mention here um, is if you have a loose safety and you want more positive clicks, if you see right in here, so if you see right here, there's a little tiny screw and if you tighten that screw, it'll tighten up this selector plate a bit and you'll get a little bit more positive clicks if it's too loose for you, you know, and if it's too tight, well, just loosen it a smidge and you can get really good like solid positive clicks on the uh, the selector there. So that's how I accomplish that. But 
Oh, here we go. All right, so we are able to replace that. So front end assembly. I know we have this already assembled, but basically um, the way it would go back in is you'd have your outer barrel, you would slide the front block down to here, you would insert your pin here, you would then screw in this metal plate back here, you would slide the hop-up unit back into the outer barrel and the inner barrel, securing this grub screw and then you can take your front sight post and using these two grub screws, secure that to the outer barrel. You can attach your muzzle device if you want and you'll be able to go ahead and now just slide this on to your receiver set. All right, so I just realized I forgot a piece. Don't be like me. I forgot to reinstall the dry fire. Um, little nub here, so. Taking all this stuff off. Okay, so that'll come off. And in which case, now yeah, we can reinstall the dry fire mechanism with a tiny little spring. And I'm gonna do coil down. Let's loop that over. Press that on there, keep the coil side down. And uh, of course, come on. All right, now we should be good to go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and reinstall this block. Find our little screws that go in there. And a half millimeter, there we go. Pinch that down, down, up, up, receiver, twist, slide, lock, lock. Moving too quickly, and let's separate this a little bit. We don't need to do the, the full kit and caboodle here, but we can slide that gas block in there, like so, and then we'll drop it back down. All right, so word to the wise, don't be like me. Install in the correct order. And there's a very clear sequence of events, unfortunately, with this sag rail. But you wanna lift this up. You want to insert your bolt, find that gas tube and run the bolt home. This is why installing this sag kit is really annoying. But there we go. So bolt to go home, and now that we've secured the bolt and installed it, we can go ahead and actually tighten up the upper part of the rail. So keep that in mind. Bolt goes in first with the gas tube, rail goes on afterwards. Okie dokie. So we've gotten to this point where the bolt is in, the gas tube is in. Wanna align that there. So now what we can do is start putting together this gas tube, which is a bit tricky. So you gotta lift this thing up, get it back on that front sight post. There we go. And then from there, we have to slide in our washer then from there, we need to grab, and I'm gonna use an Allen key to help align the threads. Come. So it looks, it's able to get one side in. So I'm gonna go back to the other side, which was kind of misaligned, but there we go. All right, so we got both sides in now, lining up those washers. Placing that in there. And so now we can take our lower hand guard, align the tabs, stick it up here, and slide it on. And then slide that right on. 
And now we just take our last piece here. Now I'm gonna go on the other side. And just make sure that is as close as it can be. Try to wiggle it around. All right, there we go. I think it's found its home. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and tap that into place. So there we go. We got that thing back in there. Grab our fastener and we'll go ahead and just screw this back together. So there we go. And then I'm gonna hold it from the other side and just cinch it down. One on that side, one on the other side here. And there you have it. Your SAG chassis is installed. Bolts here, we'll go ahead and reinstall the recoil spring. It just goes back in there go there's your top cover smack that down on down there there you go so you could just leave it like this and there you go you got a little shorty <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this build off let's put this picatinny segment on the back, grab my Allen. All right, so we'll place it on like that and then tighten the Allen down. And so that's how we turn the Tokyo Marui AKM from this into this. Quick look at the operation of the new stock. Collapsible like so, that's what that looks like. And then you pull up, flip it out, and there you go. Sweet little package. Awesome. So Thanks for watching guys. I hope this information um, was helpful. I know I struggled uh, with the SAG kit and getting this stock installed. If you don't have this little overhang piece here, it's actually pretty easy to, to work on this gun. But um, yeah, replacing this piece, super straightforward as long as you don't have um, the SAG overhang. But I want this because it helps keep um, keep the weight a little bit further back, makes the front end a little less heavy. And so you have that pretty compact short package. But otherwise, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, see you guys out there in the field.